This video is part of a series in which I describe how to implement a microcontroller core in System Verilog. In previous videos, I've described the Eve core architecture and I've shown how we can implement it on a small FPGA using System Verilog. The Eve core architecture does not contain a multiply instruction, unless, of course, you've added one. So, in this video, I'll talk about binary multiplication. First, I'll describe the algorithm to multiply two binary numbers, and then I'll show how we can turn that into an assembly code function that you can call whenever you need to multiply two numbers. In this video, we're going to be looking at 8-bit multiplication, but everything we say can be extended quite naturally to larger sizes like 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. Here we see an example where we are multiplying two 8-bit numbers to give a 16-bit result. And on the top, we're interpreting these binary values as unsigned integers. And on the right-hand side, we see the decimal equivalents. And down below, we have the same values, but we're interpreting them as signed values. And we can see that the 16-bit result is different depending on whether we interpret the values as signed or unsigned. Uh, we also see that the low-order byte is the same for both uh, signed and unsigned interpretations. This is true not just as a uh, function of this particular example, but this is true in general. So if we are only concerned with a result that is the same size as the uh, operands, then we can get by with just a single multiply instruction or, or multiply operation. But if we want the full result, we need a result that is twice as large as our operands, namely 16 bits, and we need two different instructions, one for unsigned and one for signed. We can also look at uh, multiplying the largest value. Here's the largest unsigned value. It's all ones. And we can see that we need a full 16 bits, but we can also see that 16 bits is adequate. So this shows that a 16-bit result is enough to represent all possible products. Let's focus on unsigned multiplication. And for convenience, let's give these values the names C and X. Over here, I've shown an algorithm for decimal multiplication that you might have learned in school. And in this algorithm, we go through the digits of X one by one. And for each digit, we multiply it by C to give a partial product. As we go through these digits, each partial product has to be shifted over one decimal place. And then when we're all done with that, we add the partial products to give the final result. This algorithm works just fine for binary multiplication. So here we have C and X, and we go through the bits of X one by one. With binary numbers, we just have zeros or ones, so the multiplication of the partial products is pretty easy. For a 1, we just copy the value of C here, as we've done in the first two lines. And for zeros, we just put in zeros. This gives us eight partial products, and then we need to add them to form our final result. To add eight numbers, we need seven additions. And notice that on the seventh addition, we can overflow one bit to give our full 16-bit result. We just went through the bits of x in this order here but there's no reason we couldn't go through them in the reverse order. So that's what I want to do. To make things clear, let me highlight this bit, and here's its corresponding partial product. And now I'm going to just reorder the partial products. So here you have the same partial products just shown in a different order. So obviously the addition results in the same result. We've got eight bits, and so in our algorithm, it will be convenient to do eight additions. So let me add in an extra zero value up here. So now we've got eight additions to give our 16-bit result. Okay, now I want to run through an animation to show how this algorithm works. We're going to start with x, three ones, three zeros, and two ones, and we're going to shift it to the left to identify the bits in that byte. So we see our 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, being shifted out. And these bits will tell us whether we need to add in C or add in a 0. Actually, we won't add in 0. We just skip the addition altogether. 
Okay, so here over here I'm showing the result of the additions. We're going to start with some zeros as I've shown here. And then our first bit of x is a 1, so we'll add in c. And I'm showing that addition here, and that gives us this result. Now I'm also showing an extra bit here. Remember that our result can be one greater, one bit greater, and so I'm already showing this one bit here. We won't need it just yet. Now we're going to take this result and we're going to shift it to the left. Okay? And then we're going to shift our x and see that uh, the next bit is also a 1. So again, we need to add in c. And at this point, we happen to overflow into that bit. So it's a good thing we had that extra 0 right there. So we've overflowed already uh, with this example into that uh, bit. And now we're going to shift over one bit to the left again. I'm not going to show the result of all these additions here. Instead, I'm just going to show x's to see how many bits or to illustrate how many bits would be taken up by any possible addition. And then uh, we look at our next bit. It's also a 1. So again, we add in another copy of C. And here's our result. And then we look at our next bit. Oh, we have to shift that first. So we shift it over one bit to the left. And then we look at our next bit. This time we've got a 0. So instead of adding 0, we just don't add at all. And here is our result. And then continuing, we just keep on going. We have add, 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 do not, do not, do not add, and then the final two additions. And at this point, things have been shifted over, and we can now see that our result is a full 16 bits. Now, if you notice, uh, we've got uh, some extra places up here. And the way this algorithm is going to work is we're going to take x, and we're going to combine it with the partial results. So uh, we'll be using the x, y registers. So we'll preload the x register with x, and we'll preload y with the 0, the initial 0 that we start with. And now each step of the algorithm is exactly the same. We shift, and then we either add or we do not add. So uh, we start by shifting the x, y register pair to the left. And if we shift a 1 bit out into the carry, then we'll be doing an add in the next step. And if we shift a 0 into the carry, as we do in this position here, then we will skip the addition. So again, this is very cool the way this, this works together. We take our uh, values of x that are shifted, and we just scoot them over in here. And that gives us this xy register pair. So we can shift the xy register pair together. And if we shift a 1 out, we'll be performing an addition of x. And if we shift a 0 out, then we will just be skipping the addition and just doing the shift. But in uh, all cases, we end up with our 16-bit result down at the end. And we do this for eight different uh, iterations. So now we can move into the code that actually does this shift and add operation. Here's a function that implements the algorithm we just described. It multiplies two 8-bit numbers, treating them as unsigned values, and produces a 16-bit result. The arguments are passed in x and y, and the result is in the 16-bit xy register. This function is written in the assembly code for the eCore processor, and it serves as an example of the eCore assembly language. So this algorithm is not too long. As you can see, it ends right there. Uh, and let's start by looking at the comments. Uh, first of all, we move the value that's in the Y register into C, where it will stay. And uh, the value that's in the X register will just remain in the X register. Uh, but we also need to zero out the y register. And so now we've got this uh, thing set up for our loop. And we're going to be looping eight times. So down here we have the end of this loop. And then we return. And each iteration of the loop does exactly what we described before. It shifts the 16-bit xy register one bit to the left with the most significant bit coming out into the carry. And if we just shift it a one bit out, then we go ahead and add in two xy 
the value that's in the C register. And so we keep doing that for eight times, and then we return. Now let's look in a little bit more depth. Here we are taking the value of one of our operands and moving it into the C register where it will stay. And that, then we zero out the Y register. So we've got things set up with X in the most significant eight bits and zero in the least significant bits. And so that's the zero we start out with. Now we're going to loop eight times. So we have the loop here. We'll use D as a loop counter. We initialize it to eight here. And then down here, we are uh, doing the end loop. We're basically decrementing D, right? We move D into A, decrement it, and then move it back. And then we test it. If it's uh, still not zero, we jump back up to the loop label. Now to do the shifting of a 16-bit register, we're going to have to first shift Y, and then we're going to have to shift X. So we first shift Y, left one bit, and that moves the most significant bit into the carry bit. And then we shift X, but we use the shift left with carry, which will bring in the bit that just came out of the Y register, and it will also move the most significant bit into the carry flag. So now that we've shifted X, Y, we can test the bit that got shifted into the carry. And if it is zero, then we'll jump to this else label here. But if it was one, then we'll go ahead and increment the X, Y, or add C to the X, Y register. C is eight bits. And to add it to a 16-bit register, we first add C to the Y register. And we do that here by moving C and Y into A and B and then adding them and moving the result back into Y. And that will set the carry bit if it overflowed. And if it didn't overflow, then we jump around this material here. But if it did set the carry bit, then we need to push that carry into the X. So here we are moving X into A and then incrementing it. And so that does our carry into the most significant eight bits. So that's all we have. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I do want to point out that we have this uh, pattern quite a bit in the Eve core assembly language. In order to do anything, such as add two numbers, we basically need to get them into A and B, and then afterwards we uh, move them back into whatever register or whatever location they came from. So I see this pattern quite a bit in the assembly code for the Eve core. Uh, we see it. Uh, we see it here. We see it here. Um, we see it here, uh, here, and then finally here. So this is a common pattern. But I do want to point out that something like this is still only three bytes of code. So it's less than, say, a risk five, a single risk five instruction. Now let's see what else is in this small program by scrolling up to the top of the file. And we see that it begins with a comment. And then we have the dot flash assembler directive in a von Neumann implementation, we just have a single dot flash that precedes everything. But if the implementation is Harvard and we have two memories, one for the program and one for some data, we might also see some dot data directives. But uh, here we just have this dot flash. We're going to be testing the multiply function on these two values here. And so we set x and y here. We're going to print the arguments. Um, then we are going to invoke the multiply function here, and then we're going to print the result, and then we're going to terminate. So we have two functions that we'll be using. One is called print, and one is called print hex. The print function is passed a pointer to some string to print in the M register, and the print hex function is passed a value in the A register, and it will print that value in hexadecimal. So first we're going to print a message and then print the x argument. Then we're going to print message 2. And then we're going to print the y argument. And then we're going to print another message. And then we're going to call the multiply function that we talked about. And it will multiply x and y. The result is 39,559, or in hex, 9a87. And remember that value because uh, we'll do a small demo at the end of this video, and we'll see that printed. And then finally, uh, we print the result by moving x into a, printing
printing it as a hex, and then we print Y. And then finally, we'll be returning. We're going to run this program with our little mini boot program, which will invoke this function, and then we return so we can uh, execute something else. But uh, if you wanted to run it as a standalone, you might uh, execute an illegal instruction at the end of this program to freeze up the processor. So our first message is uh, this testing multiply, and then we print the x argument, and then we print a times symbol, and then we print the y argument, and then we print the equal symbol, and then we print the result x and y. So here's our multiply function, and now let's scroll down and take a look at the print function. It's passed a pointer to a string in, in the M register, and it has a small loop here. So you can see that we just loop through the string, and for each element of the string, we'll fetch the next character. And uh, so we fetch using a load, M instruction, and then we will uh, print that character. Uh, we also increment M, and we also test the character we just fetched to see whether it is the null terminating character. Uh, we've already loaded 0 into B, so we just compare the character with 0. And if it's equal to 0, then we uh, return immediately. Otherwise, we go ahead and send this character to the IO peripheral, the UART output, and then we loop back and get the next character and so on. Uh, now let's look at this print hex. Oops, my formatting. Uh, let's look at this print hex function here. And what it's going to do is, uh, is print the 8-bit value in A, and it will do it as follows. It's first going to print the upper four bits, or nibble, we can say. And then it's, and so it calls another function, print nibble, here. And then it prints the lower four bits, or the least significant nibble. And so it calls print nibble a second time. So we've got the value in A. So the first thing we're going to do is save A. And then we will uh, print the first half. And then we'll restore A at this point and print the second half. So after we save A, we shift the upper four bits into the lower four bit position and call our print nibble function. And then we restore A. And at this point, we zero out the upper four bits and just focus on the lower four bits. And so at that point, we will then call print nibble to print the lower four bits. And then we return. The print nibble function is passed something in A, um, and it will print it uh, using one of these characters. And it assumes that the value in A is between 0 and 15 or 0 and hex f. And what is it going to do? Well, if it's in the va range of 0 to 9, then all we have to do is add it to um, the ASCII code for a 0 character to, get, to give the ASCII code for 0 th through 9. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking uh, the value in A, adding the ASCII code for 0 to it, okay, and then we're printing it. So we test first to see uh, if it's 9 or smaller. So if it is 9 or smaller, uh, that is, uh, we do this compare here. And if it is 9 or smaller, that is less than or equal to 9, then we go down to print skip. And at that point, we print it and return. But if it's in the range of 10 to 15, then we need to print it as A through F. So we've added the ASCII code for 0. So we start by subtracting that. And then we adjust it to a range of 0 to uh, 5 and by subtracting 10. And then we add, it to the ASCII, add to it the ASCII value for letter A. So this little expression right here is all computed at uh, symbol time to some number. And then we add that to A to adjust it to the right character. And then we print it. So that concludes the program. And so now let's go ahead and run this program. In order to run our program, we need to first assemble it. And here's the command line that will do that. We're assembling our multiply.s file to produce a hex file. There are no errors. 
and then if we uh, print out this file we see that it is a bunch of bytes and then we're going to do a copy paste so I'm going to highlight all this and copy it I've already done that actually and then let's take a look at this terminal emulator program that I've got running and I've got the little mini boot program running on this so I, all I have to do now is use paste to push in these bytes and so now here are the bytes of the program and if we push a period then it runs the program and we can see it printing out the output that we expect here's our message that uh, gives our X and Y values along with the 16-bit result that we are expecting to see so it looks like the program runs as we expect it to and that wraps it up for this video so I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching